you will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. How can I help? I'd like some help with ordering a book. I've tried your website, but it says it's offline at the moment and to call this number. The answer is website. So, website has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. How can I help? I'd like some help with ordering a book. I've tried your website, but it says it's offline at the moment and to call this number. Oh, yes. I do apologise. We've been having some problems with it, but I can take the order over the phone if you like. That would be great. It's a gift, you see. Can I take your name, please? Yes, of course. It's Zara Freeman. Is that Zara with an S or a Z? With a Z. Z a R A. Just writing that down. Right. What was the title of the book you'd like me to order? I think it's called Future Words. No, hang on. Sorry. That's Future Worlds. OK. Just typing that in. Uh, I can't seem to find it. Do you know the name of the author? I'll do a search. Yes, it's by a man called Richard Watson. Watson, as in W-A-T-S-O-N. Yes, that's right. Mm. Oh, yes, here it is. It's only just been released. It's a self-help book, is that right? Yes. Now, it costs £12.99. Yep, that's fine. OK. How would you like to pay? Is a debit card OK? Mm, no, sorry. We only accept credit cards. Oh, dear. Um, just let me check to see if I have it with me. Oh, yes, here it is. Can you read me the long... Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Right, almost done. Now I just need the delivery details. Right, I've got my friend's address here. It's 62 Green Gardens, London, N22. Just typing that in. 52 Green Gardens... No, it's number 62. Now, what kind of delivery would you like? What are the options? There are two. The free delivery option takes five days, or you can pay an extra £2.25 to have it sent out first class tomorrow. That would come to a total of £15.24p. Hmm... Well, my friend's birthday is next week, so it should get there in time with the free delivery. So uh, I think I'll take that. Right. That means that it will be delivered on the 21st of February, any time from 8am to 6pm. Is that OK? Well, I know my friend leaves early for work, so would it be possible for him to pick it up from the local post office instead? I'm afraid that won't be possible, but I could add some special instructions for it to be left with someone else, a neighbour perhaps? Actually, yes. I have met the old lady who lives next door and she's bound to be home. 
Could you leave it with her? Fine. I'll add that if he's not home, then the package should be left with the neighbour. That's great. Thanks very much for your help. My pleasure. Thank you for shopping. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 16. Welcome to the Homes of the Future online website. I will be your virtual guide around the homes you could soon be living in. Let's begin our tour in the bedroom. Firstly, the bed is programmed to gently rock you awake in the mornings. There'll be no more rude awakenings by an alarm clock and it will also know what time you need to wake up as it will get that information directly from your personal digital assistant, that is, your PDA, which will be inserted into you. Let's move to the wardrobe. Those are your musical shoes that generate music while you walk. The music will change according to how fast you're walking. Calm music for a relaxing stroll and faster beats for when you're in a hurry. You'll feel like you're walking on air. What's more, your clothes are also intelligent. They sense how you're feeling and then change colour. The fabric that they're made of also converts your body heat into a low-voltage electricity generator for some of the gadgets that are now inside you, like your PDA, for example. Moving on to the bathroom. So, after waking up, you need a shower. There's no need to turn on any taps as the house will know exactly what temperature you like the water in the mornings, though you'll still have to wash yourself. From the bathroom, we move into the kitchen. Now, we've all had that horrible feeling when you can't find your keys just as you're about to go out. Well, in the home of the future, you wouldn't need to panic. All you need to do is an internet search. All items are now programmed with a tracking device so that they will light up and signal to you where they are. Just in case the object is upstairs, the house will project its position on your fridge. Speaking of your fridge, this is now as intelligent as your clothes. Not only does it keep a record of when you're running low on everyday essentials, like milk, but it emails your local grocery store, which will deliver them for you. It can also help with planning meals if you have friends over for dinner by moving the chicken from the freezer so that it'll thaw in time. Before you hear the rest of the tour, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Lastly, here we are in the living area, which you'll be pleased to hear is still the heart of the family home. Let's enter the room. Now, to the left of the entrance is the main seating area with a sofa and directly opposite the entrance is an armchair. The sofa backs onto the wall and the armchair faces to the left across the coffee table to a blank wall. So, where is the TV, I hear you ask? Well, this entire wall is the television. 
The whole thing is a plasma screen, designed to show your TV, surf the internet, or, when it's not in use, it displays anything you want it to, from family pictures to famous works of art. On the opposite wall to the sofa is a fireplace, which still has a real fire. Nothing beats that now, does it? But the rug in front of the fire now also monitors the temperature and either opens or closes the chimney so as not to overheat the room. It still has its normal uses, though. As you can see, the cat likes it very much and is curled up on it, happy as can be. What else is on offer? Well, for entertainment, the family still reads books, so there is a bookcase on the wall to the right of the entrance. But what about the computer? Well, it's inside your head and powered by those intelligent clothes you're wearing. Imagine this. As you're sitting relaxing on the armchair, you'll be able to reach out and put your hot drink on the coffee table in front of the armchair. You suddenly remember that you need to send work an email. That same coffee table, holding your cup, is also a touch-sensitive keyboard for you to type your email and then click send. All you need to do to activate it is say email and the image of a keyboard will appear. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour around the home of the future and that you'll come visit again soon. Bye bye. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 30. Good morning, Clara. Take a seat. Right, I've read your first draft of your project on housing. Well done. Thank you. I know it's only a first draft, though, so I'm sure you have some suggestions on how it can be improved. I was very nervous at first because it wasn't my first choice of topic. I had wanted to do something on voting patterns, but getting information, well, it didn't look possible within the time frame. Don't worry. I think that you have made a good choice. Yes, a comparison of the factors influencing house prices, very topical. Definitely. There seems to be something about housing prices in the newspapers every day. I just wanted to compare the different factors. You know, location, the proximity of facilities such as schools. As I said, a good choice of topic. Now, the first part is very well done. You clearly introduce what you are going to look at, why and how. Do you think that I have covered enough points there? I think so. Did you have anything else in mind? You know, something else you'd like to cover? Well, a friend suggested that I might include crime rates. Actually, that's a very good idea. You might consider it. It is something that many people take into account, consciously or otherwise. When choosing a place to live, nowadays the police are required to keep quite detailed statistics on crime, and you can get them fairly easily. I mean, it's easy enough to ask for them, but it might take a while for the police to get them to you. OK, I'll make a note of that. Contact police for crime statistics. Now, I have to say that I found the middle part more difficult to get through. Oh, I thought I had done that rather well. Don't worry, it's not awful. It's just that, well, try to take a uniform approach. Use one for each criteria people use when choosing housing. That way you're comparing like with like rather than different things. I see. So I should stick with one as far as possible. Yes, that does seem logical. So I don't really need to get more data or write much more. Instead, I need to change. I've got it. It just makes it a lot easier to read. That's the main thing. Yes, of course. How about the conclusion? Based on the information you've provided, I think that you've done very well. 
you'll have to see if the new information you include changes your conclusion at all. It probably won't make a big difference, but you might see variations in some areas. OK. Do you think that I used appropriate headings? And is the bibliography OK? I know that a lot of professors look long and hard at that, whilst most students think it's unimportant. Yes. Professors find the bibliography very useful. It tells us where you are getting your information from and whether those sources are appropriate. Your bibliography is fine, but you might consider changing the format. Here's a printout of the most widely accepted format. You can keep that. Thank you. And the headings? I made a few notes. Here are some suggestions. Don't feel that you have to use them. I won't be offended. But some of your headings are long-winded, whereas others are relatively short, as they should be. Thank you. I'll take a look at these later. How long did you work on the whole thing? Well, two months, perhaps on average of three hours a day. Not more than that. Probably, oh, 150 hours? That's about what I would recommend. Anything less than 120 hours is going to be detrimental to the project. You'll probably need another 50 hours work on it in total. You've still got a month, so you should manage it easily. Yes, a couple of hours a day. Easy. I'd suggest that you come back to see me in, oh, about, let's say, three weeks' time. Then you should be virtually finished, and I can have another look before you do your final proofreading, before handing it in. OK, I'll see you after one of the seminars to make an appointment. Is that OK? Certainly. Thanks, Clara. Thank you, Professor. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a presentation on scholarship and funding. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this presentation on scholarships and funding. If you are hoping for help with funding your studies in the UK, you need to get working on this as soon as you can. It is almost impossible to make arrangements for financial support once you have left your own country. Start by inquiring with your own Ministry of Education or Department of Education. Your local British Council office can provide details of awards available, including those offered by UK institutions themselves. You'll also find information and a scholarships database on their website. The main scholarship schemes available for international students include British Education Scholarships, Commonwealth Scholarships, Foreign Office Scholarships and Overseas Students Research Awards. British Education Scholarships are prestigious awards, enabling talented international students to study in the UK at postgraduate level. Only students studying for at least one academic year are eligible. About 2,000 new scholarships are currently awarded each year, and there are plans to expand the programme further. There are three types of scholarship. The first is a full award, where all the fees, a living allowance, and travel to and from the UK are paid for. Then there is a fees-only award, where all or part of the fees are paid. Finally, there is a partial award, where a combination of the fees and the allowances are paid. The value of the scholarship will vary, depending on the type of the award, the length of the course, and the country from which the student comes but it is up to a maximum of £20,000. Contact the British Council or the British Embassy in your own country for details. You must be resident in your home country when you apply. Commonwealth scholarships are awards mainly for postgraduate study, although funding for undergraduate study may be possible if there are no suitable undergraduate courses in your home country. You must be a citizen of a Commonwealth country, including the UK. A university degree or equivalent is usually required. 
apply to the British Council Office in your country. You must be resident in your own country when you apply. About 3,000 of these scholarships are awarded each year, and their value ranges from £5,000 to £15,000. Pounds. Foreign Office scholarships are a joint initiative by the Foreign Office and certain UK higher education institutions. The awards are normally given for taught postgraduate courses. In rare cases, an award may be made for undergraduate study if the course is not available at an institution in your home country. They are funded by the Foreign Office and participating UK higher education institutions. You must normally be under 35 years of age. You must be resident in a developing country and you must not be currently employed by your government or by an international organisation. You should be planning to study a subject related to development and be fluent in English. Apply directly to one of the participating institutions. You can ask for a list of participating institutions from the British Embassy in your country or your local British Council office. Only about 500 of these awards are made each year, and their value ranges from £7,000 to £12,000. Overseas Students Research Awards are awards for full-time postgraduate study for a period of one year. They make up the difference between home and overseas students' fees. They are funded by the Ministry of Education. You must be a postgraduate research student at a publicly funded higher education institution in the UK. You will need to demonstrate academic merit and research potential. Application forms are available from UK higher education institutions, so contact the one where you want to study. For further information, contact the OSRA office via their website, www.osra.org. Actually, you can email them at osra at osra.org. On average, 1,000 of these scholarships are awarded each year, and the maximum amount is £25,000 per scholarship. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.